All right, guys, I think we're going to be kicking it off. Uh, to the participants, uh, welcome to this webinar with Zebedee, where we're going to be talking about how do you get Bitcoin into to gaming. And these guys have been trying it out for a while, and there's some interesting stuff they're going to be sharing about the Zebedee platform. So I will give you guys the, the, the sort of like the role here of leading but I, I just quickly going to mention to the audience that if you have questions that you want to ask from Andre or Chris you can put them into the Q&A here in Zoom uh, and like we'll, we're going to go through those at the end and this is going to be recorded uh, and shared later so you don't need to be worried about taking notes or anything too much. Uh, everything's going to be shared later on. But yeah, uh, I'll give the stage to you guys. Awesome. Joachim, thank you for having us. Uh, so my name is Andre Nevis. Uh, with me is my co-founder and head of games development, Chris Moss. Uh, and we're excited to talk a little bit about Bitcoin and games and what, what it can mean to uh, for your game and for your game studios and so forth. Um, so uh, I think there's just a few things that we like to do when talking about Zebedee uh, and it's sort of uh, personalizing the company. You know, what are, what is Zebedee? Who is Zebedee? Why should you actually look into our technology and, and, and platform and try to integrate with us? Um, so we are uh, a set of we're now 25 uh, in the company. Uh, we're spread around the world uh, in, I believe, eight countries. Uh, we're a distributed company and uh, we all come from different backgrounds. Uh, you know, financial exchanges, uh, uh, financial services, ex uh, crypto and Bitcoin exchanges, uh, systems development, uh, you know, game development as well, of course. So I was just mentioning uh, Hilmar and Berger from uh, CCP and, and EVE Online. And then uh, we also have angels like Chris Lee uh, from the UK side of things and Alexis Bonte, John Salter and, and many others. Um, and I think it's it's just important to understand we are uh, we are innovators and we're pioneers, but we're also a very well established and very well backed company. Um, so, what even is Zebedee, right? What, what what does it mean to put Bitcoin into games? Uh, in in a nutshell, Zebedee enables you to build what's known as play to earn games. Um, but that's just sort of a tagline. What, what it really means is uh, we take care of payment processing and we provide you the tools and the infrastructure and the developer dashboards and all the things that you need to sort of power your in-game economies, your in-game points, your in-game currencies, your in-game rewards in Bitcoin. Um, so we believe virtual economies, uh, which are not bound by any geographical uh, or, or sort of physical constraints, will be much, much larger than real economies. And we just want to provide game developers the tools to make this happen. Uh, so you can take advantage of, you know, uh, payments worldwide, near zero fees, uh, your your users and players can now uh, extract actual value from and and sort of put actual value into the games. Uh, you can make uh, what we're calling nano transactions, which are you know extremely extremely low value, um, and you can make those you know hundreds of thousands of times. So how do we achieve that? Uh, we at Zebedee have created a very in depth product suite. Uh, for the gamer and for the game developer. So Chris is going to walk through developer dashboards, APIs and SDKs and et cetera in a second. Uh, but I think it's, it's just important to highlight we are an, a RESTful API. So any environment that speaks HTTP, you're able to use our, 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 our services and SDKs. Um, and we also provide some specific SDKs for Unreal, Unity, Node.js, Golang, Python and so forth. Um, we, on the gamer side, we have a consumer wallet, so uh, gamers can download the wallet. Uh, they, they, sort of the wallet is, is present in Android, iOS. Uh, it's on, it's, it's a browser extension as well, so it's really sort of present wherever you go. Um, so Zebedee can, can sort of uh, carry you along uh, the, this, this path. Um, every wallet pro, uh, holder, every user, every gamer has a gamer tag. So your gamer tag is sort of your ID across the many games uh, in the Zebedee ecosystem and across the Bitcoin gaming ecosystem. And then we also have some integrations uh, to sort of boost community. Uh, so we have a Discord integration, we have a Telegram integration, and it, that allows your, your gamers and your players to uh, make transactions as easy as sending a message, right? And uh, essentially money is now part of your entire um, you know, ecosystem. Uh, sounds very complicated. It, it is not. We simplify everything. Uh, there's no need to learn blockchain. You don't need to know how Bitcoin truly works behind the scenes. 
uh, you're more than welcome to, and we will help you educate on everything. But the point is that you focus on building your games and worry about, and, and sort of discussing game dynamics and int introducing perfect game theory to your games. Uh, we take care of compliance and regulation. We take care of securing private keys. We take care of liquidity and uptime. Um, you know, and, and coming soon, we're going to be able to provide, uh, fiat currency. So, you know, Bitcoin to dollars or, or euros and so forth. Um, so that's coming soon in the platform. And then uh, last slide from me before I head it over to Chris is, uh, as I've been saying, we made it extremely simple to integrate. If you've ever used a third party API uh, or any sort of payment processor before, uh, this is very much the same experience. You apply for, for an API access, you create an account, you get an API key, you connect with your servers, you need to make some simple API requests. Uh, the SDKs have more capabilities, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but really, your your sort of imagination is the limit, right? Like, you, you, it's entirely up to you how to integrate these extremely tiny nano payments into your games uh, and ecosystems. So I'm going to pass it on to Chris here. Yep, let me just share my screen. Uh, this one, this is the screen. So I've got like three screens on my setup. Can you see that, folks? Yeah, looks good. Awesome. Yeah, okay. Cheers for that. Andre. Yep. So Andre just basically gave kind of a brief overview of um, what Zebedee is and the tools we have available. I, I'm going to talk a little bit more on like what you can actually do with Bitcoin in games. And then I'm going to demo our SDK in a sample game I prepared. And um, yeah, so um, I, I believe kind of showing it rather than telling it will be the best way to see it in action. But let me just quickly talk about how people are using Bitcoin in games at the moment. Um, so kind of a few main points that we see um, being addressed are the audience participation and interaction. Uh, so, for example, we're quite big on esports and we actually have a monthly Bitcoin gaming esports event called Mint Gox. And one of the games we have there is a Mario Kart style game called Bitcoin Rally, which I'm actually going to demo in a few minutes. Uh, but we noticed that watching esports is fun, but maybe we can make it a little bit better. So it actually gives the um, opportunity for the audience to send a small amount of Bitcoin into the game, which will actually spawn a power up into the game. So Bitcoin kind of being like an open um, money, um, we can kind of break these kind of fourth walls between the audience and the game. Uh, another thing that is written here is coins in game are actual Bitcoin. So you'll see an image here of Counter Strike, and we've actually added Bitcoin to CS:GO and have um, CS:GO servers enabled with Bitcoin running 24/7. But one kind of innovative thing we did is we actually made the Bitcoin the player's health. So when a Bitcoin is shot, his health kind of comes out into the game as a form of a 3D coin, and you can actually see the coin here. So then a player, in order to, to, to get the Bitcoin, has to run over and get that coin, and then they get the Bitcoin. So that's kind of, you know, it's, it's really, you know, um, money that exists as money outside of the game also exists as money inside the game. Like, there's no kind of conversion from, say, I don't know, like a World of Warcraft gold to, you know, dollars. It's just Bitcoin in the game to Bitcoin outside of the game. And that's possible with Bitcoin. Um, we also have a few other things. Um, payments can trigger in-game events um, and streaming payments for unique interactions. Um, this is a notion which I'll be demoing in my sample game, but um, we can really make the flow from sending a payment to the player kind of literally like streaming, you know, almost like watching a video as the player is playing. Bitcoin is just sent every second to their wallet for whatever reason yeah the, and uh, i was sorry. just gonna say I, I, the way to think of it too is the same way you can send data or messages across the internet you can now send money at the very yeah, same money rate, the exact same way exactly yeah i'll be demoing this in a kind of a simple sample game in a sec uh but we also have real money rewards for progression so we actually have a, a developer who's made a candy crush style game with bitcoin so as you complete level one you get one sat which is you know sats to bitcoin are what cents are to dollar so a small amount of bitcoin and if you complete level two you get two sats if you complete level 50 you get 50 sats and he re they really find that that kind of um incentivizes people to play more and for longer which we can see here um so what we have started to see in our initial um 
developers is they are reporting uh, a an up, a two x increase in retention, and this is just by giving small amounts of Bitcoin rewards to the player for playing. So, literally, we're talking a fraction of a cent. However, the players seem to be engaged that the points they earn in a game, you know, even though it has a low value, it actually it's it's more appealing to them. Another use case we've seen is um, it dramatically reduces the um, the CPI. So we had a developer who tried to use Bitcoin to um, get users for the game instead of Facebook. And, um, you know, on Facebook, it, the average cost was $5 per install. But by giving away Bitcoin, they reduced that to around 40 cents. And I'll caveat saying that at the moment, this is somewhat anecdotal what we've heard from the developers who have integrated with us so we have actually just started to do some more empirical um, tests of our own we, we actually have a few games where we are um, adding bitcoin to the game and removing it and getting the metrics on how that affects the user retention and once we have the data on that we plan to kind of release a kind of in-depth empirical article on that but Initially, this is the, the good news that we are seeing. Okay, and here are some developers that are already building with Zebedee. So we have um, Aglet, which are basically Pokemon Go for sneakerhead. So instead of collecting Pokemons, they collect sneakers. And they added to their game that you could also collect Bitcoin in the game. And these are the ones who reported a drastically lower CPI. Um, another popular developer is Thunder Games, who was a developer of hi hyper casual games, so the kind of mobile endless runner type games. And uh, he rewards the players in Bitcoin daily for just basically playing the game. And he saw a, a very large increase, increase in user retention. We then also have our own games at Zebedee. So we're not a gaming studio at Zebedee, we make the tools for developers. Having said that, we like to kind of um, push the boundaries and make some internal games so we can basically experiment with new use cases. So one of the game I will be showing in a bit is this one, Bitcoin Rally, which is a, a Mario Kart style game. And lastly, we do have like three or more venture back studios who are in stealth. So these are actually studios who are not from the Bitcoin community. They're actually proper studios who are integrating with us um and yeah and we have a bunch more coming on board which is pretty exciting uh so how can developers actually get bitcoin into their games well why don't i show you so i'm going to do something which is uh i guess generally not advised is to try and do a technical demo on a live stream but i have tested this before so hopefully everything goes the, okay the, the demo gods are on our side chris yeah the demo gods yeah Okay, I just I just do need to quit out of Chrome for a second. Yeah, so this is the Zebedee dashboard uh, that Andre briefly mentioned. And here I've made a game called a webinar demo. So I basically, you know, have list of transactions, analytics, etc. But I have a, a key for an API access. So I'm going to copy this key and then I'm going to open Unity. And this is a game I literally made last night. I just went on to Unity and typed in like free game and somebody made this free game temp template called Space Adventure, but it really illustrates how you can stream sats. Um, so let's just look at, uh, it's a very minimal amount of code. So I'll, I'll caveat this saying that, you know, you generally don't want to put an API key into your client side game. You would have a server in between the game um, and the ZD API that handles that. But I just want to show with how a simple, minimal amount of code. So if anybody's a Unity dev, this is basically just a, you know, a HTTP post request. Chris, maybe what... you can make it a little larger. Oh, yeah. probably not. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I just yeah. figured like, it'd be. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll probably waste time trying to do that. Uh, too many options here. That's fine. The window. No. Yeah, it's, it, it's, I'll explain what I'm doing, but this is basically um, there's a coin in the game, and this is a coin object. And when you get a coin, when a coin is taken, I basically go 
send Bitcoin. And that calls this function here, which is a web request to our API. And what I have here is I pass a gamer tag. So this is a gamer tag is what a user gets when they develop, uh, sorry, when they download the Zebedee wallet. So I'm just gonna share my mobile phone here. Ooh. Hold on. My mobile phone isn't sharing. Give me a second, folks. Yeah, so the, the idea behind the gamer tag is what I was saying earlier is around player ID, right? You, you're sort of mm -hmm. carrying that gamer tag with you uh, around this ecosystem. So it doesn't matter which game, if there's a game that is powering, uh, uh, powered with Bitcoin, you can sort of carry that, that gamer tag around and payments can be made to, and, you know, to your wallet uh, immediately. Um, so Chris is going to demo this right now. Uh, seems like Visor is, is having some issues. Yeah, I use this. Um... Hold on, let me force the Android ABD server has died on Windows, <laughs> which is great. It's the demo gods. They knew everything was mm. going really well. And yeah, yeah, they realized. Can you see this? Can you see my phone on the camera perchance? Maybe that's it. Uh, yeah, it. you need to. Yeah. It's blurry. Focus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's blurry. Is it not connecting, Chris? Yeah, let me just. Uh... Uh, I've got this, don't worry. Well, so uh, just to, to preface while Chris is, is solving the problem, uh, the idea here is uh, every every game of any size will likely have a server in between, right? You'll have a server connected to your client and, and the server will speak to Zebedee. So uh, the API key that he put in there um, will basically allow uh, someone to to hit any of the APIs in the uh, documentation.zebedee.io, which has in-depth documentation. Um, and you can make payments, requests, withdrawals, send directly to a user, get wallet details. Um, and we're going to uh, walk through this. But the idea is the API key is your key to sort of doing everything. Uh, and it makes things very, very simple. Um, oh, yep. it seems like Chris got it. Uh, no, uh, I just we... rebooted my phone. So this is the game. If not, I'll just go ahead with showing how the game works and then I'll, I'll show my phone afterwards just to prove I got the Bitcoin. Uh, but what I'm basically going to show here is this game. It's, um, sorry, Zoom is blocking. <laughs> it's covering up the, the play button in Unity. Uh, so we just need to, just need to minimize this window here. There we go. What do you say? Okay, yeah, so it's a very simple game. Um, I basically collect coins. And uh, when I get a coin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin will be sent to my wallet. So let me get that open now. Yeah, we should try and get the, the phone on the screen. I think that yeah. would. Yeah, sorry about that. For some reason, ABD just died and won't let me connect my phone to it. Is it no good? I tried to restart the phone, but it didn't help. So it's probably, it's probably uh, something else issue. It was working. A, it was working when I tested it five minutes before going live, but it had an issue. Um, Would you like to try my phone? No, I think we'll just, I think it's probably just best if I just, I, I wanted to show how the stats are kind of pinging on my phone right. as a Bitcoin is sent, but uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, I think it, let me know if you can see the camera, if, if I focus on it. Yeah, yeah. I think you need to let's turn off the screen sharing so you can see the full screen from yep. what you're showing. I think that's the best option. So if you okay, well, if you press stop the the sharing, yeah, think that'll help. And now, now you get the full. Yep. Yep. So. 
it's it's quite hard to see. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, oh well. Anyway, I think I'll just go to the next demo then. Unfortunately, Android for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me show Bitcoin rally. Well, do you, do you want to just quickly close out the loop there? I think uh, yeah. the the idea there was to show we have a, a well, like we've been talking about gamer tags. Uh, so as the developer, you can stream uh, the same way you stream messages to an email or you stream messages over Slack, right, or on Discord. You can perform the same functionality with with your Bitcoin. So at every uh, coin that Chris was picking up in the demos, he was receiving a push notification saying, you know, you've received one Satoshi, one Satoshi, one Satoshi. Uh, and it's unfortunate because we tested this like five times and then and then we came here and it failed. Um, but uh, Chris is going to go into another demo and then I'm sure that one will be will be better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, that's what. So. <laughs> uh, you need to share a screen. Yeah, I'm going to share a screen. Cool. Yeah, I think I'd probably need to restart my computer to make it work, which is annoying. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Um, yeah. So let me just showcase Bitcoin Rally. Do you want to talk a little bit about what Bitcoin Rally is? Yeah. So Bitcoin Rally is basically it's a Mario Kart style game, uh, but with Bitcoin. So obviously a lot of people like to say, can we not just replace Mario coins with the Bitcoin? And the answer is we can. So this is an online game that we use each month at our, our esports events, but we are, we are opening it, it up so people can play with friends and kind of compete for Bitcoin um, at any time. Um, so let me just, uh, might turn the sound off because it might be a bit noisy, um, but I'm just gonna make it an online game here. Uh, so let me just uh, log in. And I'm just gonna make an online game in Europe. I call it test, I'll do two players because I will race against myself. And um, here, this is where a player can basically, I'm. When I make an online game, I, I can add Bitcoin to the game. So I can set a fee. So players will have to pay like a dollar in Bitcoin to join, or I can just add, you know, um, some Bitcoin to start off with. Then all the players will compete and race against each other. And they will get a percentage of that Bitcoin based on how many coins they collect. And uh, also um, based on uh, the position, of course. So I'm just going to make this game now. I'm just going to scan this QR code to pay for the game. So now as a user, I'm basically depositing Bitcoin, paying to the developer to host a game. And the developer takes like 10% of that, but the rest of the Bitcoin is divided between players. And this game was merely just meant to illustrate how a game that everybody knows and loves, such as Mario Kart, can be kind of, you know, made that little bit better with Bitcoin. So I've made a game and I'm just going to also quickly join as another player. So we're waiting for players to join. Um, so I'm just going to join uh, somebody else. So that'll take one second. There we go. Here we go. So we have two players there. And another thing that this sh showcases, which Andre perhaps could help me out with, it will show a QR code on the screen where the audience can actually scan it and send a hundred sets of Bitcoin and that will drop a power up in the game. So every month at Mint Gox, um, people love to basically spam the track with power ups for the players to get. So it just makes it that bit more um, interactive. So there's the QR code there. And at the moment I'm just driving around, I'm collecting coins, each coin, will give me a bit of bit a bit of bitcoin um so this Chris, is a very F short track yep just fyi the the it's a little bit laggy on the stream because of course, oh, of course yeah that's yeah. true um yeah so if you want to just slow down a little bit and, and carry the coin and catch the coins but yeah uh, the idea is that switch. yeah the 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 thousand sats that chris put at the very beginning Right, those have just been tr transformed into these coins that exist in the middle of the map. 
Uh, and so actually picking up the coins means you're picking up uh, uh, Satoshis, right? Parts of Bitcoin. Um, but what's interesting, and this is this is the genealogy of Chris, of course, um, by what, what he introduced is normally in Mario Kart, you have that that like skull thing that you throw at people. Right. Uh, and, and the goal is to sort of stop them from from racing. Uh, in this case, you're actually going to throw the coin. So if you mm. pick up a coin, you can throw the coin, but you're actually throwing real value at someone and you're going to waste it if it doesn't hit. So you create this new dynamic where, you know, maybe I, I should be more conservative with my coins. But at the same time, I want to get the first place. So I'm going to use all of my coins. Um, so this. Your, your, your little weapon is actually worth real value. And so you, you attach much more va value to the decision of using it or not using it. Um, and so I just dropped the power up here. I, I scanned the QR code Thank on you the left that. I'm going to grab that. Oh, sorry. I can't grab it because I've got a power up in action. So I'll just let me get rid of that power up. And uh, I'll just bomb myself. It's not it's a matter. I'll grab that. So yeah, I've got a power up from Andre. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'll so just throw some coins there. The idea on the right side here, we have a, a gauge on the right side that's sort of uh, just a little bit filled on the game. Um, and basically, uh, the more people that pay QR codes into uh, the game, you know, the, dropping these power ups, uh, it also raises that gauge. And when the gauge hits 100 uh, percent, what is what we call a, a God mode, where where some, you know, the, the track goes completely awry. We have thunder tornadoes and stuff and, and yeah. you can't just drive straight. So the audience is directly impacting, uh, you know, the dynamics of the game. And it doesn't mean that they're just throwing a power up to their favorite player and sort of, you know, skewing who can win and who can lose. This is a little bit of a randomized approach. Um, so they have effect into the game and they influence the game, but they don't get to dictate how that influence is done. Um, and I think that that may sort of passes that crosses that fourth wall that, that Chris mentioned and audience participation is now you're no longer a passive participant. You're an active participant in this whole experience. Uh, and you can be doing this with hundreds of people, thousands of people online, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and just to finish, so I've finished the race and I've earned 732 sats. So at the end of the game, I can just scan this with my uh, Zebedee wallet and basically get the Bitcoin. If someone has a Zebedee, wallet they will be able to scan this as well and, and take the stats from me but for the sake of time i'm just going to scan it now and uh, yeah i got the bitcoin so we have a lot of fun with this um each uh, month and if two months ago we actually had a half a bitcoin to give away which is something like thirty thousand dollars or something like that um which uh, was quite fun and people were quite competitive um i did want us to finish up saying so you'll notice a lot of QR codes here. So this is using Zebedee to use basically like the the native um, Bitcoin Lightning uh, protocol, which means that any Bitcoin Lightning wallet will work with scanning these QR codes. Um, what I was trying to demo before with the previous game is the Zebedee game attack, which in a way is a much better user flow. You know, a user doesn't have to scan anything; they'll just add their gamer tag to a game and stats can be streamed to them. So we kind of have like a, you know, um, a variety of APIs to suit the, you know, the, the game design basically. Um, yeah. yeah, but that's, yeah. It's, it's just to, cause it's what we were saying earlier around, uh, you know, we provide the tools, we remove friction and then it's up to game developers to create the dynamics and, and sort of the game incentives. Uh, you can't expect to just shove money into a game and make it better. Right. I, I don't think anyone yeah. is naive to think that. Um, so it, it really is, you know, what Chris was demoing is like, there are various ways of integrating it. It doesn't mean that it works in every game and it doesn't mean that it works, but some games have done rewards. Some games have done an, an alternative to ads. We're using it actual as actual, you know, items in the game as actual coins that have value by, you know, throwing at each other in the game. Uh, so it, it's, it's, you know, you get to focus on building the game that you want to build. And all of a sudden you can now attach real value to things, to events, to triggers, to punches in your game. Uh, and I think that's a very powerful sort of thing to know. Yeah. Yep, indeed. Chris is trying, oh, yeah, <laughs> Chris I'm, is trying again. Ignore it, yeah, it's gonna be. Yeah. Um, oh, Hold that's on. a shame. Yeah. How is yeah. It? It's, always, it's always satisfying to see it streaming. Yeah, yeah it is. Anyway, yeah. no worries. Um, but we, yeah, but that's 
basically uh, the Zebedee platform. Um, so yeah, um, just to finish up, let me go back to my slides. Oh, yeah. So if you want to kind of um, stay in touch and learn more about how uh, our APIs work, uh, please do um, hit me up. I'm chris at zebedee.io. And yeah, we love to chat to you. We have a Discord group where we talk about game dev and I assist people with using our APIs and SDK, SDKs. Uh, we also have a bunch of games that people can play now. And I mentioned um, briefly that we have a monthly esports event where we play all these games such as Bitcoin, Rally and Counter Strike for Sats. So that's a, gr a great way to actually see it in action and see the users enjoying it. Um, that's about pretty much it from me. Um, yep. So I'll probably yeah, just. If, uh, you, yep. if you want to join uh, and sort of get your your feet wet, I would say the the head start would be to download the wallet and sort of uh, get the Zebedee wallet, get a gamer tag, and then get familiar with that. It, it should feel familiar. We, the point is to remove any complexity, right? So it shouldn't not be something that you're unfamiliar with, that it's completely new. Uh, but we're trying to make Bitcoin uh, easy to understand and easy to use. Um, so, you know, get started Zebedee.io uh, and, and that should be the, the first starting point for, for gamers. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And <clears throat> I think I, I got a lot of out, out of this. Um, I don't know, like I own some sats as well so i'll probably need to get some That's more right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think like we got the audience here who can ask questions but i prepared some questions for you guys as well which i wanted to sort of throw your uh, to your direction before we go to the q a from the audience so if, if people have questions start writing them down there and we'll go through them in a few minutes but the first thing i, I wanted to talk to you about is the players who you know come to the Minkok tournament and, you know, they're, they're playing these games, they're showing up. Can you talk about the demographics of these players who, who are sort of like these early adopters for people who, who want to play to earn Bitcoin? Yeah. Um, so I'll probably uh, kick off on that. Um, the cool thing about Bitcoin is it's basically, a, you know, it's kind of a global currency. So, so we get players from, all countries um so we i would say demographically uh, we started off originally getting uh, basically people from the bitcoin space you know um so gamers didn't hear about us initially uh, but at the moment um we have started to get more and more gamers who are maybe interested in bitcoin but haven't really played around with it coming on board and um so we often get a lot of people who, who who might not initially understand that stats are Bitcoin. So they'll say, hey, I want to get some stash. They'll, you know, you know, I want some stash and it's cool. And they'll kind of ask a basic but important questions like, so I've got this the this Bitcoin. That's cool. But what can I do with it? Oh, I can play it in this game or I can use it on this site. Um yeah, so we were actually quite surprised how fast that happened. I think we're quite lucky because a lot of other blockchain games have quite a high barrier to entry you'll need like a, an ethereum wallet or download metamask you need to get some eth etc but with the lightning network and zebity um, we've really kind of made a ux which is um, appropriate for gamers i.e they have their gamer tag they download a mobile wallet it's familiar it's something like a, a cross between cash app and, and discord um yeah so that's quite good to see yeah and, and just to add to that i think uh it, it depends on on sort of the the games in this ecosystem too right if we're getting uh loads of hyper casual candy crush that will bring one type of demographic of gamers and then if we have a bunch of call of duty csgo that will bring a very different demographic uh not only in age and and sort of uh age group but but also uh locations right for example we now have a very large brazilian community because csgo counter-strike is very big in brazil um so there's a large you know number of brazilians that are they're sort of filtering to, to the zebedee side um but as chris mentioned it's it's a global borderless money right so there's uh and and in each and every country there are many ways to if you 
so want to do, you can move your Bitcoin to your other currencies if you so desire. Um, so it sort of uh, works in a, it's just, it's tough to, to, to find another way to say, it. it's just more performance money in the, from the tech side. It's just more mm. performance. There's no, there's no barriers. I can just send to anyone everywhere. It's instantaneous, right? It's feeless. And so uh, it provides for these new dynamics. Um, so yeah, demographically speaking, um, I, I would love to share more over the coming months as we are doing some user research on our own. Um, and, and more specifically, I'm sure that's an interesting piece. Um, but uh, at this stage, we're, yeah, that's what we're able to share. Nice. From a game design perspective, what, what are sort of like the, the motivators and the player needs that you've identified when, you know, a game like the Mario Kart sort of gets a Bitcoin integration? What changes there for the player needs? Yeah, so I can talk at length on this. Um, initially, when I started doing Bitcoin games, like 2013, um, the first thing we tried to use Bitcoin were for in-app purchases. So people would purchase a game item with Bitcoin. Uh, but that hasn't really taken off at the moment. And the market generally went down a route where uh, players like to get Bitcoin instead of spending it. Um, so the, the use case you see at the moment is a kind of um, way for increasing user retention and also user acquisition. But because of the lightning network with Bitcoin lets you send like a fraction of a Bitcoin, a fraction of a cent, it, bring the, it brings those costs way down. So from a business point of view, that's what we're seeing at the moment. However, having said that, um, people are starting to be more creative with it and, you know, um, using bitcoin in more innovative ways such as the audience participation or trying to get like trading engines or economies added to the game so people can trade their game items with a liquid currency that has value outside of the game um specifically with the mario kart game um i think we get a lot of players who um maybe from you know uh a, not a poorer country but let's just say you know they're not rich Europeans per se, or they might be younger people in Europe. And they like the fact that using their skill alone, they can play a Bitcoin rally game in a tournament and earn actual money. So I guess, you know, esports is quite competitive. And if you want to make a lot of money with esports, you have to join a team and then, you know, you have to basically make it. So we kind of feel that it, democratizes that so we have players from all over the world especially younger players who are just great at mario kart and now they can capitalize on it um so that's kind of what we're seeing at the moment and uh yeah yeah nice. sure if andre has anything to add to that i was just going to say some sometimes it creates some interesting dynamics as i mentioned earlier we the coins are actual value in bitcoin rally um so there was uh so at a, in a normal tournament in Mint Gox, if someone is really far behind, um, what ends up happening is they know that they're not going to win the prizes for the first top three. So they actually slow down and they go around the track picking up the coins because they know that this is their way of earning value, right? And and so I'm, I'm not saying that is the outcome desired. I'm just saying that it creates, you know, adding actual value to things and now creates these dynamics that you didn't foresee before. You know, now there's a person going really slow in the track, not caring anymore about the, the you know, becoming first, second, or third, but they're picking up all the coins. And at the very end of the ma of the race, they still come out on top, right? They still come out with with gaining something. So um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm actually looking forward to the, the other games that are coming out with, with the platform because I think they will create things that we have not thought of. Uh, and that to me is the exciting piece. It's like the technology exists now. Uh, the, the magical brains of game developers are gonna take it to the step further. And then you're gonna create genius things that we had not come up with ourselves, so. Mm. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, got one more before we go to the audience questions. Like, can you share more details on these retention and CPI improvements that you you briefly showed in one slide? Like, uh, like, can you can you share anything more in depth about those? Yeah, we will be doing so. Um, so obviously, as a lot of developers will know, the games industry um, it, it's quite strict about what data they see on 
retention rate. So we have a couple of games where we are running experiments with at the moment. Um, so uh, the Candy Crush game is one. I have a hyper casual iOS and Android game. And we basically have two versions of these games. Um, one without the Bitcoin, one with the Bitcoin, and then one with the Bitcoin, but doubled. And the experiments we are running are basically, um, you know, does the user retention increase if you add Bitcoin? And does it matter how much Bitcoin you add to it? Um, so we are kind of actively collecting this data. We ran an experiment over the weekend and people know how analytics can take a few days to trickle in sometimes. So we're analyzing analyzing that data and we will release it in a kind of a blog post. Uh, but at, at the moment, um, I, I would say anecdotally, um, the, the, the developers ha who used us, they mainly used us because they wanted to lower the CPI and CPI can be quite expensive with ads and also you know the player doesn't really benefit the the developer doesn't benefit but the ad companies benefit a lot so by directly giving bitcoin from the developer to the player obviously cuts the middleman out the developer is happy because it costs them less and the user is happy because you know they feel like they've got bitcoin for free you know and yeah, uh, yeah it's um it's quite exciting especially now because obviously Bitcoin and blockchain is very much in vogue, um, you basically get access to a whole new audience of players that might not be interested in your game. Um, just a quick anecdote. I get emails constantly from parents who say, oh, thank you for your, your Bitcoin game. I can finally get my son interested in Bitcoin in, in a safe way that he can play, you know. And um, I'm happy that he's playing this game and actually earning some Bitcoin rather than playing another game and basically just trying to spend from my credit card or something <laughs> so yeah that's nice to see yeah that's a good one yeah hey let's go to these questions here uh, there's a there's a few here uh, you guys can see them as well let's go for sparky's question uh he's uh my question is around the energy consumption of each transaction yep. if if these are nano transactions there are more of them. So does it mean it's more, it's very energy hungry? Yep. Is it only Bitcoin or do you have like options for Ethereum at the moment? Yep. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think this is probably in reference to a lot of people have concerns about, you know, Bitcoin and crypto's energy consumption. We actually use the Lightning Network on Bitcoin, which is an amazing innovation. So just to kind of quickly give a brief overview, if you send... Bitcoin via the, the default way to send Bitcoin, as we call it, on chain. Um, you know, you, you can argue that that's, that does use a lot of um, energy because the whole network has to validate that. With the Lightning network, in a single Bitcoin transaction, you can send millions of transactions that don't use, like the only energy they use is the same energy that a normal SQL database will use. So, that's how we basically work. When you send, um, uh, when you use the Lightning network, uh, your transactions are secured by Bitcoin, but they don't use the energy. They're basically a million times more efficient. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, that's that's what basically makes Bitcoin scalable with the Lightning network. Yeah, that's a... why we're able to do these millions of transactions where other networks can't um it's it's ver it's a vertically uh sort of uh it, it expands vertically right so instead of the, the the act of making a transaction on the bitcoin blockchain is now instead of doing one one transaction on the bitcoin blockchain for one exchange of goods for services right i can make that single transaction and basically open what's called a, a channel so i open that channel and in that channel i can make hundreds millions thousands of transactions and then you know i, I don't have to consist consistently depend on the the bitcoin blockchain at the very bottom which is uh can be considered uh you know energy uh, heavy. So um, we are very aware of this and uh, we chose the Lightning Network specifically for this reason. Uh, you know, it, it is the one solution that allows us to scale uh, to millions of transactions, which is what the gaming industry needs, right? You, you can't, yeah. 
yeah, you, you can't power a 400 K MAU game with, you know, something that takes 10 minutes, right. To, for transactions, it needs to be very yeah. fast. What scales Bitcoin in transaction term also automatically scales the use of energy. And this kind of goes on to why don't we use Ethereum? Um, Ethereum doesn't have anything like a lightning network that lets it scale. And it's quite difficult to do that on Ethereum from a technical point of view. The beauty of a Bitcoin is it's a very simple smart contracting language that's designed to transact Bitcoin. Because it's simple, that lets us basically scale it very easily. Ethereum is more general and it's a lot more difficult to scale. So we won't really see any solutions to that coming out that are ready for a while, I believe. Mm, good. All right. Uh, there's um, Mohammed asking. I know. Yeah. I, I got my screen share working. If I, if I want to quickly <laughs> show that, um, it'll yeah. only take a second. Um, let me just do that. I want to yeah. do it now before the gods realize. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so quickly do it. Uh, there we go. Can we see that? Yes, yeah. we can. Oh, uh, we can see the font. The font's gone. It's not always on top. There we go. I died. So there we go. We should see the things come through, mm. the payments. Um, and then if you, if you update your phone, if you scroll yeah. down. I just basically got three sets there. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show how with a simple API key and a request, I can basically just stream one sat worth of, of, of Bitcoin. And you know, it, it, it's really simple. I don't have to worry about running a node or the user doesn't have to have a you know special 24-bit phrase. So you just basically download the wallet, have a gamer tag, which is Mandelduck, and they can start to stream sats in a, a you know a um, frictionless way. That's um, awesome. Cool. Sorry about that. Let's sorry, sorry to interrupt the flow of questions. <laughs> no worries. Uh, that was useful. Uh, there's a, a question from Mohammed. Oh, he has he's asking several ones here, but I think there's a lot of technical questions here. But I, I'd rather ask one of one from him, uh, which is about like how do you guys handle Google Play and App Store rules? Because uh, this is basically like your yep. this is sort of real money, uh, yep. yes. you know, that's moving all over the place inside an app. Like, do you pay fees? What what's all that about? Yep. So I mentioned originally when I tried to use Bitcoin, I used it to let people purchase items in a game, in-app purchases. But obviously, Apple and Google Play don't allow that. Um, traditionally, I'll get on to the, the recent updates, which might make it possible in a bit. So uh, at, at the moment for uh, mobile, we basically find that Apple and iOS are okay with the concept of sending the user Bitcoin. That's fine. With mm. one caveat, Apple have a, uh, it's called a cash for task rule, which means that you can't directly reward a user with cash and Bitcoin counts as cash for doing a task. But if it's random, they allow it. So we have a mobile game on iOS where you basically have to spin a monkey and make him fly through the air. And if he randomly gets a coin, Bitcoin is sent to him and Apple have approved that. Um, on okay. Android, we have a game where you get Bitcoin for completing it like a Candy Crush level and google allow that but apple don't so the developer mm -hmm. is trying to add a random element to it to allow it on ios that is currently speaking um when i started doing bitcoin on in games apple had banned all bitcoin apps at all and they basically eventually they open up as they start to understand it more and that brings us into a few d developers might be aware of the recent legal um uh legal questions um, legal challenges from Epic Games uh, to Apple. Um, basically, there was concerns that Apple are being forced to allow third-party payment mechanisms in addition to in-app purchases because they kind of have a monopoly. You know, it's kind of somewhat antitrust, I believe. So, uh, I believe I'm not. You know, um, it's still being finalized, but I believe that Apple will probably need to let developers accept other methods of in-app purchase in the apps um, in, in certain stores. Um, so that's probably what we're going to see is that you'll be able to finally accept Bitcoin as payments for things as well as being able to send it out to the player. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, a question here about 
the APIs, playing around with the API, de debugging, doing stuff, not using real sats. Like, how do you how do you guys like how, how does a developer just pick it up and start pl playing around? Yeah, so I can speak a little bit. We are working to, uh, there's this notion of a main net, which is the main network with real money. And then there's a notion of a test net, which is a test environment. Uh, we are working towards providing a full end-to-end -end test environment uh, over the coming months for developers, which I understand is very, you know, very important. Uh, in the meantime, we're, the partners we're working with, we pr essentially provide them some Satoshis to play and develop and not have to worry about, you know, using their own funds. Um, of course, since if you're trying to make a transaction for, you know, $5 to, to test, maybe don't use the $5 worth of, of, of Bitcoin, right? Every time, make you use one Satoshi uh, to make the tests. And then whenever you're ready, you can go to production environments and you can use actual amounts. Um, so it is part of roadmap to provide test environments with full on capabilities end to end. Uh, in the meantime, we work with our partners and we say, hey, for your testing purposes, here's some some Bitcoin to, to I use. would add that when you test it, you can also just send the Bitcoins to yourself. So I yes. <laughs> develop the game and I add Bitcoin to my developer platform. And then as a user, I use my Zebedee wallet. So obviously the, 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 the developer wallet it's sending Bitcoin out, but I get that and I can send it back into the developer wallet. If, and that's that free. Yeah. yeah, so that's, that's free. free. Right? So, yeah. so no, it kind no, of no keeps costs. it circular inside the dev environment. So like no sats are lost. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but a testing right. environment is very much something that I, I we understand is needed. Uh, yeah, just we'll generally on, on Bitcoin, on previous Bitcoin development before the Lightning network uh, people use the testing environment with test bitcoins however with the lightning network because it lets you send a fraction of a penny people just tend to use real bitcoin to test it with a fraction of the penny because it would basically cost nothing you know um yeah yeah got it um i think about the the scalability of this like if you'd have an mmo let's say running like here's a question like how scalable is the current solution like how many transactions could one game even like handle at this stage per second? Uh, so this goes back to the scalability piece um, where we were talking about, you know, one single Bitcoin transaction allows for hundreds, thousands, millions of lightning transactions. Um, mm. Of course, this is of course, this is early stages for the network as a whole compared to, you know, where it will be in five, 10 years. Um, to, to be very honest, you can power you know, I, I'm not trying to put a number to it, but like 100,000 MAU games without a problem, like that would be fine. Um, my point is, if you just from today to tomorrow, Fortnite turned on, you know, Bitcoin payments, they have however many millions of users. I'm sure there will be some some uh, issues that they will face because, uh, you know, it's, it's a large user base. Uh, but other than that, I would say it's it's very much ready to accept any sort of of. Uh, a game that has, you know, hundreds of thousands of transactions a month. We are, uh, Zebedee is seeing uh, uh, anywhere from half a million to a million transactions a month uh, in our in our platform already. Uh, and that's just powering some games that have not, you know, reached their their sort of, you know, big, big time. So um, we are ready for that for that purpose. And I think that the network is ready. Uh, the capital is deployed. The payments are, 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 are clearing. So um, I think it's essentially testing new technology, right? There will be a time where a game that is really, really big will come into this, this space and it will force us to adopt, innovate and push forward the technology as we have been doing over the past months. Um, so it's it's very much in the trajectory uh, for, for that to be the case. Yeah, I would probably just say that like the bottleneck isn't with the Lightning Network protocol per se. That is, yes. in, that's academically, it can scale millions of transactions because it. It's what we call off chain, um, which if people want to know more about that, please message me because it's a topic. The bottleneck is probably just, you know, the tools that people have built with, you know, just need to yeah. be battle tested with, you know, like millions of users. Right. You know, obviously there'll be general bottlenecks you find in general tools that people make. Right. You know, if I make a game without blockchain and I suddenly get a billion users, my server's going to crash. Right. You know, but Yep. Is it possible to make a server to handle a billion users? Absolutely. So that's kind of where we are at the Lightning Network. Exactly. So as we it increases, then we just, you know, it just scales as any other piece of software would. But in the Lightning technology, there's nothing inherently, you know, um, that adds a, a bottleneck there per se. Yeah, got it. Yeah.
because it, it, it doesn't use blocks it's off chain but anyway so that's another topic <laughs> yeah okay yeah there's a there's a question here about like because you've been trying you've been seeing this integrated now in different genres like uh have you seen any kind of like advantage in terms of reducing CPIs, making the retention numbers better for with this Bitcoin integration, depending on the genre? Or is it too early? Or like so I I would, you know, Chris Chris probably knows more here, but I would just say I think there's two pieces there. I think one hyper casual games. Uh, can tend to really drive up uh, uh, retention because it's very, uh, it's it's a very simple reward, right? The mm-hmm. user sees the reward immediately, and there's that that feedback loop of I'm going to come back to continue to earn that reward. Um, so that has definitely been a very clear path for for gamers. Uh, and then on the other end, I would say uh, something like Counter Strike, which is an FPS game. Um, that is, it, it sort of bleeds into the competitiveness, right? And it bleeds into uh, skin in the game scenarios, which is I am very good at Counter-Strike and I'm going to compete. Uh, so uh, instead of being, you know, the top 1%, which become professional esports players, you can now be uh, sort of a really good Counter-Strike player and compete against other really good Counter-Strike players, but you don't have to be the top 1% of everything. Um, so it, it bleeds right. into the competition aspect. So I think those two are really uh in, in our opinion, they've been proven models, right? Like the FPS competitiveness and the hyper casual, the quick rewards. Um, but I, mm-hmm. as to your point, I think it is, uh, we are seeing lots of developers building different genres right now. So I think that will be sort of, uh, we will understand more over the coming months as these come out, uh, because I think that will, will shed some light on, on a few pieces that we're still uh, learning. Right. Hey, I, I think this is, we're going to wrap it up now, guys. Uh, this was really good. Uh, thanks so much for, for doing this. And uh, like, uh, we're going to share the recording later on YouTube. So I'm going to yep. put it out there and share it all over social media. So you're getting, you can watch yep. it again. I noticed there were, there were a few unanswered questions. So if people want to DM me or look me up, I, yes. I'm, I'm happy to answer after the fact. But just a quick there are no gas fees incurred. So one one thing stuck out there. But yeah, okay, yeah. good to know. All right, Joachim, thank you so much for having us. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, hope to to speak again soon once we have more cool things to show. Yeah, let's do it again, guys. Yes, thank right. you. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye.